Good morning. Time for a little fashion fix flow plus some core workout and strengthening. So I'm teaching this week, super exciting, on Thursday at 7 p.m. at Trey Fitness. Um, it is over in Edina. There is um, a link on my Facebook um, where you can see the event details. It's a free one hour class. I'm teaching Fashion Fix for 30 minutes. And then Luis Leonardo is gonna be teaching body work fitness for 30 minutes too. So it's an hour class. It's free, but um, the donations for the class go to Kasner's Kick to Shen. It's hosted by Zaya Activewear. My good friend, Angela Matson is hosting um, the event. So any of her profits from the evening also go to Kasner's Kick to Shen. If you're watching this and don't know what Kasner's Kick to Shen is, um, I'm happy to give more information if you personal message me, but in general, you can find a lot of information on all of my social media pages, but it's my best friend whose two sons um, have to shed muscular dystrophy. So it's um, a way to support the family and to help bring awareness to um, ending Duchenne. So that's Thursday, it would be super fun. It's, we've done one of these classes before where it's a combo teaching class and people love it. So come, you know, you, any little bit that you wanna give helps, but it's really a fun fitness evening as well. So that's Thursday at um, seven o'clock. So. Uh, next up, I am going to go into this class. So fascia stretching is awesome because it stretches the connective tissue in your body. There's a million benefits to doing that rather than just stretching the muscle. But when you're executing fascia stretches by yourself or on your own, much like in a class setting that we're going to do right now, it's an amazing strengthening exercise as well. So whatever part of your body is doing the movement to stretch the fascia in a particular area, that part of the body is being strengthened. So you're not only stretching the fascia, but you're strengthening your muscles, you're using your core for stability, and um, another huge positive to that too, so you're strengthening your core, building endurance there. We will go into some more specific core work for the glutes today, so that should be super fun. Okay, so I am going to just make sure that this is ready. Okay, good. All right, so let's get started. You will need a mat. You will also need, um, possibly if you like, um, a pillow or a blanket that I have for doing some of the work that we're gonna be doing on our back. So to start, quick mention, if this is the first time you're gonna be watching um, one of these classes, Fascia stretching is opposite than regular stretching. Rather than lengthening the muscle till you feel the stretch and then going a little bit further, you shorten the area that you're going to stretch. You add resistance or activation, which compresses the shortened muscle. When you shorten that muscle, it shuts the stretch off in the muscle and gets to that connective tissue or fascia. So you would resist or activate into a shortened muscle and then the motion is moving in the opposite direction of your resistance. The key with it, and I'll go through it a couple times during the class today, is that you're resisting in the shortened muscle and you're moving in the opposite direction. So I'll cue which direction you're going to be adding resistance. When I say resistance, basically it's activating your muscle like you're showing someone your muscles and how strong you are. You're doing that with your body in the shortened muscle. So let's get started. We're gonna warm up first with a cat camel resistance stretch series and a little bit of torso to the right and to the left. Then we're gonna be doing a little bit more focus today on lateral hamstrings and, um, and glutes as well. So you're gonna come down onto your knees. If you need a little extra cushion underneath your knees, feel free to roll up the mat or grab that blanket or that pillow. Coming down onto your hands and knees. My wrists are directly below my shoulders and my knees are directly below my hips. I'm gonna lift my belly up so you don't want to work from a sway back that's not supported by your core. Lift that rib cage up and a little bit of a chin tuck, chin towards your throat. So you're creating a nice flat spine here. So when we're doing cat camel, much like you do in yoga class, we're gonna add resistance in different directions as we arch our spine and we drop our spine. So first I'm gonna lift my belly button up towards the ceiling and I'm gonna resist my hands back and my knees forward at the same time. So you can kind of see me add that activation here. 
So I'm going to keep resisting as I round my spine up, drop your head down. Now as I bring my belly down, I resist my hands forward and my knees back, and I drop my belly to the floor. First one usually feels a little bit tight. Hands resist in, belly lifts up. Hands resist forward, knees back as you drop the belly down. Hands resist in. Something just cracked in my spine. Rounding up, reverse. Dropping the belly down and resisting my hands forward. Lost my hip place in a little bit. In and round up. Hands resist forward. Belly drops down with a slight chin tuck. You don't want to look and crank at the neck there. You want to just offer yourself a little bit of a chin tuck. So you're gazing on the diagonal in front of you. Let's do two more. Hands resist in, knees resist in, round it up. Breathing through, hands resist forward, belly drops. One more round, hands resist back, belly lifts. Hands resist forward, reaching through. Come to a neutral spine that we started to begin, so the belly is lifted. We're going to walk our hands over to the right. So one hand is off the mat for me and one hand is still on. I'm going to focus on the, the hand that's on the mat. Both are going to resist towards my opposite knee. We're stretching the fascia in the chest in and around the hand that's still on the mat. Belly's lifted. Pause. Find your direction. Resist down and back on the diagonal. Once you feel like you have it, then you're going to draw your hips in the opposite direction. You don't need to go all the way down. I go almost all the way down, but everyone's different. So you want to just add the resistance in the right direction. Start your movement. If you feel like you're hitting a wall or that you're not able to keep the resistance, don't go any further. Just pause and hold it and then start again. Hands resist down and back to the diagonal. Draw the hips back. I'm feeling myself be able to go a little bit more while I'm maintaining a nice strong resistance. Pulling it back. Thank you for those joining me. I hope you're getting a good feel for this. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. Let me know. Draw it back. Let's do one more here. Shift your body weight forward. Resist your hands back. Once you feel that direction, draw your hips to the opposite side, away from your hands. Breathing. Good. We're going to move to the other side. Walking your hands over. That's going to take... My knees are apart. Just a quick little note to give myself a little good base. One hand on the mat, one hand off of it. My resistance now is down and back towards the opposite knee. So once I feel that direction, kind of right into here, I'm going to pull my hips. Ooh, this side's tighter today in the opposite direction. The main idea here is that you're shortening here to start, add your compression by activating that muscle area, and draw and peel yourself away. Good. Bringing it forward, resist the hands back, pulling the hips in the opposite direction. I'm really feeling a lot of this underneath my scapula on the right side, which means it's probably a little bit dense tissue going tight for whatever reason. I was using the ice picker this weekend, probably that. One more time, shifting forward, hands resist back. Pull it back, breathe. Good. We're gonna bring ourselves back to center. Keep your knees apart and your feet together. Now we're gonna to try to get that area right in between your shoulder blades. A lot of people hold a lot of tension right there. So to do that, we're gonna do a similar motion, but we're gonna to come to center and down to your elbows. I clasp my hands because I feel like it gives me a strong base. Bring your elbows in as close together as you possibly can. Lift that belly up again and shift your body weight forward. I'm going to resist my elbows straight back towards my knees. But my knees naturally resist forward. Once I have that, I'm going to pull myself a couple inches whew, back in the opposite direction. Shift forward. Forearms and elbows resist back. Draw your hips back. Keep the belly lifted. Feel the resistance coming from between your shoulder blades. Shift forward. Add the resistance 
I'm going to take it a little bit slower, ease off a little bit on how much resistance I'm giving myself. I'm actually feeling this a little bit in the chest too. Let's do two more. Raise this elbows back. Breathing through, pulling it back. This is really good if you have that upper body neck tension to release this area between the shoulder blades. Pull it back. Good. All right, we're gonna make our way into downward dog. If you have any knee issues, this is one that you can try. If it doesn't feel good, you can modify it or just take a break and we'll join back up again. Take a moment here to breathe in your downward dog. I'm reaching my heels towards the floor, my hips to the sky, and my hands are nice and stable into the ground. Take your right leg and lift it up behind you. Draw that knee forward into a pigeon pose. Good. So where is your leg position? You don't want your heel all the way in or all the way out, kind of at a 45 degree angle with a slightly flexed foot. From here, we're going to stretch our lateral hamstrings. This one is very, very effective, and it feels really, really good, but it's also really intense. So rather than just passively resting forward in your pigeon pose, we're going to come up out of it. So a couple things are going to happen here. I am going to push my knee and my foot, the whole shin, straight down into the floor. Feeling the activation in your lateral hamstrings and your glutes slightly. My back leg is a little bit extra supporting as well by pushing down. So I'm going to push straight down. I feel it here. As I do, I'm going to keep my body square to the front. I'm going to start to fold myself over. All the while, I'm pushing the knee down. Notice that I never really sit down in that hip. I'm always lifted out of it. Coming back up. Press it down, feel that activation, lateral hamstrings. Most people have tight lateral hamstrings. I'm gonna lose my frame here a little bit as I fold it over. Maybe I'll move it back here a little bit. Starting lifted, press it down, peel yourself forward. Breathe, this is intense. Your heart rate comes up. You're affecting a very large muscle group. Press it down. Lateral activation, maybe fire your glute a little bit more. Fold it over, keep pushing down, keep pushing down, never lose your resistance, that's the key. We're gonna shift our body, our chest, towards our knee slightly, getting a little bit deeper stretch. Press it down, and now I'm gonna fold towards Woo! my knee. I feel that. Let's do it one more time there. Press it down, fold it forward. You're kind of going up and over, knees pressing down, 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 down. Make your way downward dog. Flip the toes down and back and press yourself back up. Take a breather here. Inhale, full breath in. Exhale. Force your breath out a little bit extra. Inhale. Exhale. Left arm, left leg rather comes up. Bring the knee towards your chest. And you're going to place it down on the mat. Scoot that back leg back a little bit. Flex your foot down here. Your knee and foot are about a 45 degree angle. So we're going to stretch the fascia and the lateral hamstring on the opposite leg now. So to start, you can either also have maybe a block or a table next to you for support. Or if you feel confident and able to do this without too much discomfort, you can lift yourself up. So it's actually a little bit easier to do it once you try it. It looks like this could be a hard position to maintain, but we're not here long. Back leg is pushing down. Knee and foot and shin push straight down into the floor. Feel the resistance in the lateral hamstring. Once you have it, square yourself up. Start to fold and peel yourself forward and down. Good, come back up. Find that placement, push that shin straight into the floor. Tummy's tight, breath is flowing, fold it over. Really affect those lateral hamstrings. If you can execute this comfortably, this is a really good exercise to do, a muscle area to release if you suffer from low back pain. Always making sure that you don't have any knee pain while you're doing it. Press it down, lateral hamstrings, fold it forward. Breathe. We're gonna shift it slightly, I'm gonna scoot back a little bit. You start the same, lifted. 
Turn your sternum towards that knee, so you're getting a little bit more of an angle. Press it down, fold, breathe. Chest comes towards your knee, slightly changing the area of the fascia that you're stretching. One more time, press it down, fold it forward. Keep pushing down, keep resisting, don't let it go. Good, make your way back into downward dog. Starting to warm up a little bit here. Good, heels reach down, armpits to your thighs, and breathe in, and exhale. One more time, inhale, and exhale. Good, carefully lower down to your knees. Good, rest in child's pose for a moment. Arms extended in front of you, forehead to the floor. Inhale, full breath in. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale, lifting up. Good. Thank you, all of you that are joining me today. We are going to go into the leg opener. So we are going to work on stretching our inner thighs and our ITV, or our lateral muscles, both quad and hamstrings and glutes. So when doing this, I'm going to grab my little blanket for my pillow here. Good. So feel free to grab something as well. So you're going to start on your back. Settling in. Ooh, go to sleep. Just kidding. Bring your legs up to 90-90. So that's 90 degrees from the hip and then 90 from the knee or thereabouts. We are going to take our hands into a fist and our forearms on the inside of our knees. So you're starting with your arms between your knees, your knees in pressing into your arms. I want you to pause here, tighten your tummy, feel the knees pressing in and activating your inner thighs. Breathe through this as you have that, you're gonna open your legs apart by using the strength of your arms. So this is what I was talking about when we first started class. You're strengthening your arms a ton while you're stretching the fascia in your inner thighs. This workout is multifunctional. You're getting fascia stretching, which your body desperately needs, always has, but you're strengthening your arms. You're basically doing a rear delt fly when you're doing this. Breathing, making sure that your resistance is comfortable for you, meaning that you don't have to go as hard as you possibly can. Um, you have control, more or less, resistance. I'm starting to get a little fatigued in my arms. Let's do one more. I'm going to bring my head up for this one. Knees resist in. Focusing on feeling it in the inner thighs. Find that direction and you move it in the opposite. Hug your knees to your chest. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Grab underneath your knees. Lift your upper body up and extend your arms so your legs are away from you. Resist your legs away from you. I feel it in my hamstrings and in my glutes and in my tummy. Use the strength of your arms to pull the knees in to the chest. Reach the legs away, resist them away. Bring your knees to your chest. One more. Extend your legs away. My legs are shaking today. Feels great. Pull your knees to your chest. Rest your head. Maybe look side to side. Maybe see any tension in the neck. We're going to go the opposite. We just stretched your inner thighs. Now we're going to stretch the outer thighs or ITB. So you're going to make that fist with your arms again. And you're going to open your legs and make a connection with your arms here. I'm going to resist my legs out. So I want to feel the resistance coming from the outside or, or lateral aspect of my legs. Once I feel my knees resisting out, I use my arms to bring them back in. So the strengthening here is basically doing a chest fly, which is awesome because who doesn't want to get their arms nice and strong? Knees press out, arms bring them in. You can change your grip. Maybe do the hands on the outside of the knees, press out, maybe keep your head down, Push your knees in, I'm going to come back up, open, press out, and bring it back in. Rest your legs, take a deep breath in, big exhale out, good, reach your legs to the sky, arms down to the ground, open across the chest, 
Tighten your lower core. You have a muscle called your transverse abdominis there. I call it the magic muscle. Engaging your abdominals. Press your feet together. Tighten your glutes here. Curl your upper body up. Lift your arms up. Legs are going to switch and switch and switch and switch. It doesn't have to be big. The more you add resistance to your movement, they have purpose and placement. You don't have to go so big. You're still going to have a huge effect. If your neck gets tired, bring it down. Four, three, two, one. Knees to chest. Inhale. And exhale. Bringing the legs down to the floor for a minute. We are going to go into the glutes, pure formis. I'm going to cross, this is my right leg, cross one ankle over the other knee. I am going to reach up and grab on the outside of the knee that's crossed. Press your knee away from you and your ankle into your thigh, tightening the glute on the leg that's crossed. So I'm going to focus on that. My hips are level, my tongue is engaged. Use the strength of your arms to bring the knee towards your chest. I have a huge clunk, that really dense muscle that was dehydrated from damage to um, a, a, a former hamstring tear where I have a lot of scar tissue built up. So this particular stretch I love to do before I'm getting in a car, especially if I have like a two hour car trip. This is really good so I don't have to keep up the whole time I'm in the car. Two more, press that knee away, press your ankle into your thigh. One more time, you can bring your head down at any point. Pull it across. Rest. Good. Take a deep breath in again. Exhale. Crossing opposite ankle over. Open up that knee. Give that foot a little flex. You're going to reach up and grab the outside of your knee. Press your knee away from you and your ankle into your thigh. Once you feel the activation in your glute, keep those hips level, tummy tight. Use the strength of your arms. Again, strengthening the arms to pull it across. My head's getting tired. I'm going to bring it down. Press the knee away. Press the ankle into the thigh. Pull it across. Woo! And press. Let that body work. Challenge yourself. See what it feels like to maybe resist a little bit more. Good. Two more. Press. Feel that left glute. Keep resisting in the opposite direction. Last one. Sun shining. I love it. Good. Knees to your chest. Turning onto your side. Find that pillow or that arm or something that is comfortable for you to prop your upper body on. It's not comfortable, so there we go. Okay, we're going to strengthen our glutes and do a little bit of core stabilization. So I want your hip on top of hip, shoulder on top of shoulder, so that means not leaning back or forward. Pull that belly in even though you're laying on your side. Bottom leg stays bent and pushes into the floor. Straighten your top leg. Fire your tummy, fire your glute, fire your hamstring. You're going to lift up a couple inches and hold for five. Four, three, two, and one. Lower it down halfway. Don't touch. Lift it up. Focus glute, focus hamstring. Five, four, three, two, one. Lower it down halfway. Lift. Hold five. Four, three, two, one, two more, lower it halfway. Engage your muscles, have them play a role, have them move your bones where you want them to go. Lower it down, last time, belly in, leg is straight, five, four, three, two, stay here on one, pulse is 10, nine, glute, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, lower it down. Good, and let's make your way to the other side. Told you there'd be some extra strengthening stuff. Although we're strengthening our glute, that's part of our core. So we're core strengthening. All right, finding a comfortable position down on the ground. Bottom leg is bent. Pull that belly in, engaging the core. Top leg straightens out. Hand on top of your hip if you want to make sure that you're not dropping forward or back. Good. I'm pointing my toe as you can't see it in the frame. You're going to lift it up and hold it. Activate hamstrings and glutes. Hold five, four, three, two, one. Lower it halfway. And lift. Five, four, three, two, one. Lower it halfway. Three more of these. 
Make it work for you. Find that engagement. Keep it. Access your muscles. Move with purpose. Two more. Hold. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm feeling it. Down. You don't have to do 100 reps to have the same effect if you execute properly. Five, four, three, two, one. Stay. Add those pulses. Ten, nine. From the glute. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Whoo, lower it down. Good. All right, so we are going to just finish real quick with a little bit of a plank. So you can go on your knees or on the balls of the feet, whatever is most comfortable for you, down to the elbows. I'm gonna start on my hands and knees. All right, take everything you just did, all the muscles you stretched, all the muscles you strengthened, and think about them when you're in plank. Notice how they work for you to execute what you're asking them to do. In this case, the plank. So I'm gonna come down to my elbows, and I'm going to go into the balls of my feet. So I'm a nice sticky mat. Okay, a lot of times people are here. Lengthen your tailbone away, find your chin tuck, and engage your hamstrings and your glutes more than you need to to stay. Staying here as you're comfortable, able to maintain your posture and form. Think about those muscles. Are they shaking? If they are, your nervous system also had to work up today. Breathe. Exhale. Five, four, three, two, and one. Coming up to rest. Take a seat. So glad to see people joining me today. Good. All right. Rest in your hands on your knees. Let your shoulder blades glide down your back. Offer yourself a little chin tuck to create a little length in the back of your neck. That doesn't mean down or up, but straight back. Good. Inhale, full breath in. Take a little bit extra breath in at the top, a little bit more than you think you can, and exhale. <sighs> Slowly, letting the breath come all the way out. Two more. Inhale. Exhale, slow. Let the tension melt away from your body. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Awesome. Thanks for joining me for my Tuesday morning fascia fix flow. I'll be here again next Tuesday, but I think I might do a little bit later, but I'll let you guys know on social media beforehand. If you're liking what you're seeing, as I'm noticing all these other social media people are doing with videos, share it with your friends. So fascia stretching definitely is something that is new to a lot of people, but it's something to do as soon as possible. If you're someone that wants to think about longevity and quality of life with longevity, um, avoiding injuries, those kind of stuff, this truly is the way that we should be stretching. Um, I have a lot of experience on both sides of it now, and so I feel very confident in saying that. So I love teaching this work. Thank you, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.